In this video, we'll go over the first six questions from which series convergence test we use. The full video is on my Patreon, including my handwritten solution, so make sure you go check it out. The link will be in the description. Number one, we have the series as n goes from one to infinity, n to the second power plus one over n to the third power plus four. Have a look. If we just compare the powers right here and right here, n squared over n to the third power is just 1 over n, and we know that series much better. In this case, we are just trying to ignore the plus 1 and plus 4. Have a look. If we are just looking for the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n, this is the harmonic series, which diverges. And you can also look at this as the p series. This is n to the first power, and make sure you indicate that p is equal to 1. Not only that, make sure you say p is less than or equal to 1 for the p series to diverge. Now, once we have this, we are going to make a comparison. And uh, we have two choices. Either do the direct comparison test, that's when you do the inequality. But because we have the plus 1, plus 4, the inequality is not going to work out so well. It's okay. Let's go ahead and check the limit. So we are going to be using the limit comparison test. To do so, I will just check the limit as n goes to infinity. Let's put down this expression on the top. That's the one that we are trying to find out. And then let's put down the one that we know on the bottom. And then let's just go ahead and compute this limit. Let's multiply n on the bottom and also on the top. And then I'm going to distribute the n. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity. n cubed plus n over n cubed plus 4. Then to take this limit, because n is going to infinity, we just have to compare the highest power on the top and also the highest power on the bottom. And the limit is just equal to 1. Now, we have to remember what we are trying to do with the limit comparison test and then what number we are trying to use. If we get a limit 1, we will have to compare this with 0. 1 is bigger than 0, and in the meantime, we should also indicate that this limit is not infinity. Because for our regular version of the limit comparison test, you have to make sure the limit does not equal to zero and the limit does not equal to infinity in order for this to work. Since this is true, then we can draw a conclusion and the conclusion is the same as this conclusion here. So we can come back and say this series, let's use the word also, that will help us to draw the connection, also diverges. And uh, we should also quote the name of the test. So just say, by the limit comparison test. So that's number one. Next, number two. We are looking at the limit, sorry, the series as n goes from 3 to infinity, ln n over square root of n. Okay, imagine if we didn't have the ln n, if we just 1 over square root of n, it's just going to be the series of 1 over n to the 1 half power. Well, again, that's a p series. So we're going to draw a connection. And uh, let's see, how can I get rid of the ln n though? Well, luckily, n starts at 3. So I will just write for n bigger than or equal to 3. Since ln is a natural, it's a natural log function with an increasing function, if I take the natural log on both sides, this inequality will stay the same. And the good thing is that 3 is bigger than e. So I can do the same thing and say that's bigger than ln e. ln e is equal to 1. So right here we can say our ln n, when n is bigger than equal to 3, ln n is bigger than 1. So now I will just go back to our ln n. I'm going to replace that with 1. In the meantime, I will just use the inequality. How cool is that? And then let's write down the rest. 
And then remember, square root of n is the same as n to the 1 half power. Let's just write that down. P series, let's go ahead and put this down. Our P is equal to 1 half. And remember, you should indicate that P is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, this series diverges. And what we have shown so far is this series is bigger than a divergent series. This series technically diverges to infinity. You have something that's bigger. So I can just say, I'm going to make it like this. This also diverges. This time for our comparison, we did a direct comparison test because we're using equality. So by DCT, the direct comparison test. Number three, we are looking at the series as n goes from one to infinity, two to the n over n factorial. Ha, we have the factorial, right? So we shall use the ratio test to give you a try. And remember, what we will have to check is the following. We check the limit as n goes to infinity. Usually, you write it as a n plus 1 over a n, and this right here is our a n. But if you put it down like this, it's going to be a complex fraction. Let me show you guys like this. You write a n plus 1 times 1 over a n. It's slightly easier. And for the ratio test, technically, we will have to apply an absolute value. And now let's go ahead and set this up. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. a n plus 1 is just you look at this expression and then plugging n plus 1 into all the n's. So that's 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and then you factorial that, times 1 over a n. You just do the reciprocal of that. So n factorial on the top over 2 to the n on the bottom. Now, do we need the absolute value? No, because everything inside is positive since n is going to infinity, right? n is 1 to infinity, right? So no need for the absolute value. Then we are going to break down the part that has the bigger n value. So the 2 to the n plus 1, break it down, we have 2 to the n times 2 to the 1 by the rule of exponents. n plus 1 factorial, that's the same as saying n plus 1 times the next, which is just n, times the next, which is n minus 1, and so on. You can just write it like this. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. Maybe keep that in mind because this happens pretty often. And then happy canceling. The n factorial cancel, the 2 to the n cancel, and now we are just looking at the limit as n goes to infinity. 2 on the top over n plus 1 on the bottom. As n goes to infinity, this right here is equal to 0. Now, we have the answer for the limit, but if we are trying to use the ratio test, what exactly do we have to say? The answer is, we will have to say this limit is less than 1. We are using 1 to compare this with. If this is less than 1, we get to say our series converges by the ratio test. If it was greater than 1, then the series diverges. If it's equal to 1, then we will have to choose something else. Number 4. Let's see the series as n goes from 1 to infinity, and we have 4 times negative 2 over 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. Firstly, have a look. On the inside, we just have a number. And then in the exponent, that's where the n is. The minus 1 doesn't matter. The constant multiple 4 also doesn't matter. This is a geometric series. All we have to do is look at the common ratio, which is that number, that's negative 2 over 3. And what we will have to do is to check its absolute value. As long as the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1, 
then we get to say this geometry series converges and I'm just going to quote it by GST namely the geometric series test and now it's just to look at the common ratio and that is it as a little bonus in fact we can figure this out when you have a geometry series you figure out the actual value of what the series converges to and the formula is you will need the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio now for the first term I'm just going to do it right here for you guys you plug in whatever the starting value for n is into this n so we are looking at 4 times negative 2 over 3 raised to the 1 minus 1 this right here is 0 so this to the 0's power is equal to 1 so the first term is equal to 4 and then do the rest 1 minus the common ratio which is negative 2 over 3 and then really just do the math 4 over this is 1 plus 2 over 3 which is 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3 so that's 5 over 3 and then let's go ahead and multiply 3 on the bottom and also 3 on the top so it converges to 12 over 5 so make sure you also know how to find the value of what the geometry series is converging to number 5 series as n goes from 1 to infinity 1 over square root of n factorial now we have a factorial so what do we do if you say ratio test yes here we are going to be using the ratio test again it's a great idea whenever you have the factorial but not all the time it's just a great idea so let's go ahead and check the limit as n goes to infinity the absolute value is not needed and I will actually write down the formula again for you guys we check an plus 1 times 1 over an in the absolute value technically but we don't need it you will see in a second an plus 1 is 1 over square root of n plus 1 and then we do the factorial inside and then we multiply by 1 over a n which is just the reciprocal of this and that's just square root of n factorial and the absolute value is not needed because everything is positive next break down the n plus 1 factorial which is just n plus 1 times n factorial and it's a multiplication inside of that square root so it's a square root of this times the square root of that then happy cancelling this and that cancel and we are looking at the limit as n goes to infinity which will have 1 over square root of n plus 1 to consider as n goes to infinity the bottom will get to infinity 1 divided by infinity you get a limit being 0 and remember for the ratio test make sure you mention the limit right here it is less than 1 and can go back to here and say the series converges by the ratio test number 6 here we have a series as n goes from 1 to infinity and then here we have ln of n over n plus 2 so firstly though if you notice this right here that is just going to be the log property right away so I'm going to break this down as ln n minus ln of n plus 2 and the key right here is that this is just a telescoping series because these two parts right here you can see they are of the same kind but they are just off by 2 what I mean by that is you can look at this as bk or sorry bn in that case this is just some series b and then the subscript is plus 2 so that's the idea and they are subtracting that's why it's a telescoping and the quick way to do this is the following this is equal to go ahead start with this number plugging it once 
plugging it twice. Why? Because the inside, they're off by two. So I'm going to start off by writing down that we have ln1 plus ln2. And then next, what we will do is, you start with this part, write it down on the end, so ln of n plus 2. It's a subtraction. And then you also need two terms at the end. This is one term already, so we also need to subtract its previous term, which is minus ln of 1 less, so it's just n minus 1. And uh, in fact, let me make this in blue, so minus ln of n plus 1 minus ln of n plus 2. This is a super quick way to find the nth partial sum of the series. And then, we will take the limit as n goes to infinity to check if this right here converges or not. Be super careful though. When n goes to infinity, this right here gives you negative infinity, and then this right here also gives you negative infinity. These two are finite. And then subtract infinity, subtract infinity, you can see the whole thing will give you negative infinity. Therefore, you can say that this is a divergent, and the way that we did it is the telescoping method. It's a divergent telescoping series.